Hi everyone, welcome back to iOS development. Uh, today we're going to be talking about table views and this lecture and the next lecture, which is collection views, it's going to go into a UI element that's used very frequently on iOS apps because when we want to display a lot of data, we need to display it uh, similar to say Instagram where you have a bunch of posts and Spotify where you have lots, lots of songs, they're displayed similarly. And that's because it's either using a table view or a collection view. Uh, we're going to be talking about table views today, and we'll go a little bit more in depth after we go over some updates. So uh, first off, uh, the questions channel hasn't been used that frequently, and we would like to encourage people to start using it more because there have been a couple of repeat questions asked, and it would be great if we can get those repeat questions asked and questions first so that everyone has uh, some common FAQ questions to refer to. Uh, for coding questions, though, uh, don't ask those on questions. Ask those to a TA, but we want you to ask a assigned TA mentor now because it will make uh, the course steps life easier. Uh, all of the TA mentor groups were created equally, and so uh, that would help distribute the workload, and it also help you get to know your TA mentor more. That was the point of the program. Uh, and for office hours, uh, it's been a little bit wacky, but right now what the process is going to be is you're going to enter yourself onto the queue and then you'll join the Zoom chat. And then there will be a TA in there uh, that will be in a breakout room and they'll assign you to that breakout room when it is your turn. So let's do some lecture three review. Uh, first off, um, how do you push and present a view controller? Uh, remember that when you're pushing a view controller, you're going to use a navigation controller. So you, it can't be A or C because those don't have self cell navigation controller in front of them. And when you're presenting, you're not going to use a navigation controller. So it can't be D. So this answer is B. Uh, and then why do we use delegation? Well, remember, uh, when you're trying to pass data between view controllers, if you're trying to pass data between view controller A to view controller B, that's pretty trivial. You just need to, before you push it or before you present it, you need to access one of its variables and you need to set it to something. Uh, but when you're going back, that's where it's a little bit tricky. And that's why we have to use delegates because we're going to set up a protocol on an extension in view controller A. And then we're going to uh, have a delegate of that type, of that delegates type in view controller A, but in view controller B. And before you, push view controller B or present view controller B, we need to set the delegate equal to that view controller. So uh, delegate equal to self, and then you'll be able to use your delegate functions inside of view controller B to pass information back. So this looks like C. So let's start talking about UI table views. What exactly are they? So uh, it's just a scrollable list, which is gonna let us put a lot of data into that list and it's going to also represent data as cells, which are basically visual representations of that data. And it also works with delegates. So uh, just what you learned before with protocols and delegates, this also applies to this. Uh, it goes more in depth. And we're going to have to make our view controller conform to some delegates. So first off, uh, let's look at some examples. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you open your settings, app, you'll see uh, you have like a section, there's another section and another section of these uh, rectangles. And this is what a UI table view is. It's very similar to Spotify as well. There are not, there's no different sections, but it is a scrollable list. So this would be considered a UI table view. So what exactly is in a UI table view? Like I said before, it's broken down into sections. So the settings app had three sections, it probably has more if you scroll down. And then your Spotify app had only one section, right? And that's actually what we're going to be doing in this demo and what you'll be doing in your project. So you won't have to worry about sections too much. Uh, each section is broken down into multiple rows and each row has a cell in it, which represents the data. So going back to the settings app, we have three sections, right? You have the big rectangle at the top and then you have uh, five rectangles inside of section one and four rectangles inside of section two. Uh, each of these rectangles are corresponding to rows. And if you look inside of a row, it has a UI table view cell in it. So this UI table view cell has 
a UI image view on the very left, which is an hourglass. You have the UI label, which is screen time, and you probably have a UI image view on the right too, which is that arrow. So you can think of a UI table view cell as um, basically how you set up UI view controllers, but it's a different class and it'd be used multiple times. So how exactly do UI table views work? There's four things you need to consider. There's a table view controller, <coughs> sorry, a table view controller that lets you manage the table view and you'd set that up similar to how you set up any other UI element. There's a data source object, which is gonna provide data for the table. And uh, you set that up similar to how you set up delegates before you push uh, another view controller. Same thing with the delegate object, that's gonna help you set up um, manage UI uh, user interactions with the table's contents. And again, uh, you need cells in order to represent your data properly. So uh, to set up a UI table view, like I said, it's very similar to before, you just instantiate it. You said translates auto resizing masking to constraints to false so that you can actually see something be displayed when you constrain it. And then you want to add it to the sub view. But there's some extra steps too, because we need to set up the rest of the steps. And that's uh, that you have to do table view dot delegate equal to self. You need to do the dot data source equal to self. And then you also need to register the cell class. And then there's also a reuse identifier, which we'll go more into later. But these are uh, the important things that you need to remember when setting up a UI table view. So first, let's go more into depth with the data source. Uh, whenever you set a view controller equal to a table view's data source, it needs to conform to the UI table view data source protocol. And what this protocol is going to require from you is that you need to set up the number of rows per section and also the UI table view cell to display at each row. And the reason for that is because if I have a UI table view, I want to know how much data I have. So I know how many rows I'm going to present uh, to have in the table view cell. And I also want to know how my data is represented. So it's kind of intuitive why these have to be required. And then you can also have, like I said before, uh, you have sections. So you can also set the number of sections. Well, we're not going to implement that. It's optional. So uh, we'll have one section by default. And the corresponding function names are number of rows and section, self of row at, and number of sections. So if we look into how this works, when you conform to UI table view data source, is basically you make an extension, just like how you did for delegates. And then you're going to have your functions in here because the protocol is requiring them. So uh, they look like a handful, but if you look, it says function table view, you have an underscore table view, UI table view, and then after that, you have the name of the function, right? So number of rows in section and cell for row at, if you type those in, the autocomplete should find these functions for you. So for number of rows in section, that would return a number. So in this case, it's getting table data's count. So table data has the data in it. Uh, and then for cell for row at, you're going to create a cell. You would do table view dot decubable reusable cell. And the decube reusable cell, uh, we'll go more into that later. And that's related to the reuse identifier. But basically, this is going to create a decubable cell, and we'd want to return that. And then the index path is telling you which cell that you want to get. Then you can also set up the delegate, right, that handles your user interactions, has to conform to the UI table view delegate protocol, but nothing is required. You have a height for each row, and you also are able to select and deselect cells. Those are all optional. But you want to implement the height for each row. Uh, you're going to see during the demo that if you don't do that, your table view is not going to look great. And then the corresponding functions are height for row at, and then you have did select row at and did deselect row at. Pretty self explanatory. Uh, it's similar to how you do uh, the UI table view data source. Uh, for height for row at, that's going to return an integer, right? So in this case, the height to the row would be 64. So uh, after you set up your delegate and your data source, you also need to register a cell. Uh, the UI kit is gonna give you default cells. Uh, you'll see in the demo that they're just empty cells, but we're gonna wanna use custom cells. If you look in the bottom uh, on the left side, that's a custom cell for one of our apps uh, uplift. And on the right side, that's one of our cells for transit. So if you want to set up custom cells, you need to do table view dot register. And then you'd set the cells class. You'd say uh, your class is called um, 
transit uh, transit table view cell, right? You'd want to type in transit table view cell dot self because that will give you a reference of the class. And for cell reuse identifier, we can go into that now. This relates to the queuing. So what exactly is that? So table views are very good at dealing with a lot of data, but if we want to render all that data, that's not going to be great because it's going to take up a lot of memory and it's going to slow down our app and we don't want to do that. So what the queuing is going to do is if you look at the Spotify app, you see that there are, you can scroll and there'd probably be a lot more songs here, but it's only showing you a few, like a subset of that huge song list. So the intuitive thing would be if I'm scrolling as soon as one of my cells goes off the screen, I don't want to keep showing that because I can't see it. So I'm just going to stop rendering it. And instead I'm going to render the cell that just popped onto the screen. And that's the idea of the queuing. That's going to take care of being able to render a lot of data, but in a little space so that we don't have to use up a lot of memory. So to do that, we're going to do table view dot the cable view super cell and your identifier can be anything. Uh, you can set the string to whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. It just needs to identify uh, your cell. So when you're registering, you need to put the cell class and its reuse identifier, and that's how it associates your cell to some ID. So basic steps of UI table view. Uh, you have five, right? Make sure to initialize and lay out your UI table view. And that's just like you do any other UI element. You set up the view and you set up your constraints. That should, you guys should all know how to do that. Um, create your custom UI table view cell. This is going to give you the data representation of what that piece of data should look like. You want to do that next. Uh, after that, once you have your UI table view cell, you can properly register it. And once you do that, you also want to set your uh, table views data source and delegate equal to the main view controller. That's going to make you want to conform to UI table view data source and UI table view delegate. And then you can set those up. So let's remember these five steps and let's start with the demo. So let's get out of here. And uh, let's take a look at our design for today. So based on the previous app that you all designed, uh, Cornell didn't like this because this was too simple. So they wanted you to have the four questions from the daily check. And so this is why we're using the table view cell. This is going to make this app scalable if they add more uh, questions. And uh, for simplicity, instead of having a yes or no button, we're just changing the background color. So if I press it when it's white, it should turn green at first. And if I press it when it's green, it should turn red. When I press it when it's red, it should turn green again because you can't deselect once you select it. So this is the basic design. Looks like we have a navigation bar and we have a table view that's spanning about half of the screen. So with that, let's open our Xcode and set this up. Uh, so uh, let's open here. Um, I'm going to create a new Xcode project. Just an app. Uh, we'll call this table view two next. And we'll put it in the desktop. Great, okay, here we are. Uh, let's, oh, we don't want this. Set it to 11 Pro, and let's start this up. This is uh, 11 Pro, I believe. You can do this, click on frame, 11 Pro X, and yep, that's an 11 Pro. So yeah, cool. Just borrowed something from the projects. All right, so let's go in spec mode because this is how you're going to be viewing this. And let's take a look now at the simulator. Okay, so it's white right now. Um, let's set the view controller to something just to make sure the sanity check everything's working fine. Let's make this down here. Great, okay, it's blue. So uh, I think let's start with the easier thing, which is the navigation bar. Uh, I'm not going to delete the storyboard. You can refer back to lecture two or the course site. 
to see how to do that. Um, but if we want to set up this navigation bar, we want to uh, build it here. I'm going to be using Windows Sync. Uh, I'm using Delegate. If you have an outdated version of Xcode, I'll show you what to use. Uh, so let's create a window. Uh, and this is going to be Windows Sync. I want to do window. Well, not window itself. I want to get the window currently, and I want to set it to the window I'm creating. I want to set the window to be visible, and I also want to set open window window, and I want to set the actually. Let me do self anymore. I think it is root view controller, and we want to set this to UI navigation controller. And that's how we're going to get that navigation bar. So uh, if you have an updated version of uh, Xcode, these are the ones that you want. Uh, just copy this over to App Delegate. And I made a mistake in my second lecture. Uh, I didn't do self dot window. Make sure you do that. It should be in the description of the video. Uh, and what you want to do here instead is uh, let's get the autocomplete. Your frame is going to be equal to the UI screen dot main dot bounce. So this is how you'd want to do that. Uh, but because I have an updated version of uh, Xcode, it's going to give me this issue. So let's do this. Okay. So let's run this again, make sure everything's working. All right, got our navigation bar and good. Now we can get started. Uh, so let's see what it is. Let's set the title of this first. Uh, and there was data check. Great, right, let's do that. Uh, so our title is data check. Doing this In issue. Uh, let me fix this off screen. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I put UI view controller. Let's backspace over here. Should be view controller because we want this. So notice that there was something off because our view wasn't turning blue. There we go. Now this is working. So uh, now we have now that we have this uh, is basically what we want. That's fine for now. Uh, I will set this to white just so that it matches with our design. And now let's get started with the UI table view. So first step, if we go back to the PowerPoint, is to Initialize and lay out your UI table. So let's do that. Uh, similar to how we've done before, uh, so we're going to let, and let's choose a variable name. Looks like these are questions. So I'm going to call this question table view. It's going to be equal to UI table view. Uh, let table view. So uh, now we want to set this up. So let's make some functions to keep everything organized. I'm going to set up views in here, of which we only have one. Then we're going to set up the constraints in here. Great. All right. So we're going to do questions table view. Always translates all of those items and ask to constraints to false. And then we want to add this to the sub view. And now I want to set up some constraints. This is one. Activate and okay. So we want it to be that we want the top to be equal to the view. So let's try that. Um, question to the view that top anchor is going to be constrained to reset equal to for now view dot top anchor. Uh, and then the rest are going to be pretty similar. We want the leading 
and the trailing it looks like okay it looks like we need to offset a bit so it looks like uh 13 and 17. so our leading anchor is going to be offset by 13. yep and our trailing anchor is going to be inset by 17 so minus 17 so that it goes back and up our bottom anchor we said that it's like halfway to the screen it does say 451 here but uh, i'll show you another trick to try to make things scale off of the size of the screen we can do we want to go we want to be an inset so i'm just going to get the ui screen main.bounds just like how we do in the app delegate setup I'm going to get the height and let's divide that by two. Let's try this. Uh, and, uh, this looks fine. So we have our table over here. I'm scrolling it. So it looks like we set it up correctly. Uh, okay. Um, so what is the next step? Now I want to create our custom UI table view cell. So to do that, we want to create a new file. I'm going to click here on file. We go to new, click file, and we're going to want to make a new Coco Touch class. We click next, and we want to select UI table view cell. I have a selected here ready for me. So we're going to type in. Uh, it says table view cell. I want it to be a question table view cell. Make it more descriptive of a name, and we'll just click create. There we go. So we have some thin, um, some things in here. Uh, we can just get rid of them. And to set up a UI table view cell is really analogous to the view controller. So in our view controller, we have a view to load function that we override. Well, here we're going to override an initializer. And we want to use this one that takes in the style and a reuse identifier. Please remember that we want to reuse ourselves. So uh, there's one thing here, looks like there's an error. So we'll just click fix and we don't need to worry about this. This has to do with storyboard and how the interface builder serializes and deserializes things. You can look that up on your own time. Uh, it's out of the scope of this class and we're not using storyboard, so it's not relevant to us. Um, so uh, before I do anything inside of the initializer, I want to do super.init and pass the style and the reuse identifier to the super class. So we're overriding this, so it's going to take it back to the UI table view cell, and this will take care of anything that uh, we're overriding here. Now. Uh, great. So now we have our view to load, and now what we want to do is just set up the UI elements just like before. So let's take a look at this. We have just one. Uh, so here we go. We have two lines, so you might think, okay, let's do a UI text view. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do a UI label, uh, and I'll show you how to have multiple lines for UI labels. Because at most, uh, with this size, it looks like this uh, this row is size 50. We have three lines. It's not going to look that great. So I'm just going to make it a UI label because I don't want you to be able to edit it anyways. So. Let's make a UI label. So it's going to be the question. So we'll do question label, make it equal to the UI label. So we instantiated it here. Okay. Uh, similar to before, we're going to set up our views in a function and set up our constraints. So we'll always keep things organized. And here we go. Uh, function setup views and setup constraints. Uh, okay, so to set up our views, we're going to set up the question label. So first things first, translate auto resize masking to false. And eventually we want to add this to the sub view. So you notice now my autocomplete isn't working anymore. And if we wait a little bit, uh, it says cannot find view in scope. The reason that's happening is while in view controller, we access view.addSubView, if we're inside of a UI table view cell, there is no view property. This isn't a UI view controller, it's a UI table view cell. 
So the analogous thing to view is content view. So again, very similar, right? Uh, as long as you know this and this, you should be good. Uh, okay, so we added this and now let's set the constraints before we set anything else. It's like 14 from the top, 14 from the bottom, nine from the left, nine from the right. So uh, let's do NS layout constraints, activate constraints, and then we're gonna now pass in uh, top anchor, constrain that to the content view this time. And we want to do it off the top anchor and we want to set this to 14. Yep, yeah, good. Um, now we're going to copy this two more times. This is bottom anchor now. And we're doing it off the bottom anchor. This has to be negative. And then these are going to be nine. If I make this my leading anchor, this should work. If I make this my trailing anchor, the only thing I need to do is I need to make this negative because it's an inset. Uh, okay, um, let's set some text to this label and see if anything happens. Okay, well, let me let's stop. And nothing's appearing. Well, that's fine because Again, if we go in the order of the steps, I'm still creating my custom UI table view. I haven't registered it yet. So I have no, the UI table view has no idea this is a possible cell. And I haven't even displayed it yet uh, with UI table view data source. So we haven't even gotten there. So let's just, to, to be able to test this, we're gonna want to probably skip ahead. So let's try doing that. This looks fine right now. Uh, I can fine tune maybe the font size and stuff later once we have something that shows. Just go back and view controller and let's start setting up uh, the table view even further. So we'll do that here. So we want to register it. I'm going to do register and I want the second one. It's the cell class and the cell reuse identifier. So what is our cell class? Well, it's what we named our file. You can also double click. Whatever you name your file is going to set it as a class. So make sure you name your files correctly. This is going to be dot self, and this is going to give us the class type, which is what it's asking for. And now for the reuse identifier, like I said, it doesn't matter what you do. We we'll just create some variable question reuse identifier, and it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to set the reuse identifier equal to the variables name. And then you can just pass it in here. And we want to set it to a variable because we're going to use it throughout the, the file. So uh, this looks fine. Uh, let's start it again and see what happens. And again, nothing because we haven't set the delegate or the data source equal to self. So let's do that now. Question table view dot delegate equal to self. And let's give it a couple of seconds and we're gonna get an error. So I can click here and it's gonna give me more information. Uh, can assign a uh, type view controller to type UI table view delegate because I'm not like, conforming to that. So we need to conform to that. We click fix, it's going to put it up here. And this is one way to do it, but say we do question table view dot data source equal to self give a couple of seconds for it to give us the error. We can click here and fix that. Now we have table view data source here. That's fine, but now we get another error because remember when, we're con uh, when we have this UI table view data source, we need to conform to the protocol. So if I were to fix this, it's going to give me my number of rows in section and my cell for row at, which were required. But now I have table view cell, uh, I have table view functions inside of my view controller and this is going to be a lot to work with. So instead of doing this, let's just undo this. We can leave this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this here and we're going to make extensions and that's going to make our code much cleaner. So extension, uh, I want this to be an extension of the view controller. This conforms to uh, to be UI table view. One of them is delegate. And then the other one 
is the data source. This one, you can see that there are a lot of protocols you can conform to. These are the ones you're going to be working with. Then we get the error, so let's put these to fix that. And right here, uh, we see our number of rows in section. You see that there's four, so let's just return four for now. And over here, we have our sulfur row at. Let's create a cell. So that's table view of DQ, we'll reusable cell. We want the second one because we want to pass in our identifier, which is question reuse identifier. And then we also want to do the index map here. And let's just return that cell. Let's try this out. And great, now we're actually seeing stuff because now we registered it and now we set this up. This is what let us uh, see the cell. So now we have four. If I were to change this to three and I run it, now I have three, right? You might have more cells, but remember these are the default cells that don't have anything. These are our custom class cells. So we have hello world now. So let's actually format this so that it looks something more like this. Uh, but now I'm looking at this and it looks like I have different text for each of them. And the thing is that in my question table view cell, I set this explicitly. So I want to pass in data, but how am I going to create data out of this? Well, the thing is you need to have some dummy data. Uh, normally you get this through networking, but we need to create some dummy data first. And to do that, uh, we think back to lecture three, we've been, uh, we were introduced to MVC, which is the model view controller design pattern. Uh, if you actually take a look at what we're doing right now, uh, we have our UI view controller here. We have a separate file for our view. And the only thing that we're missing is a model file. And we do need a model file if we want to create data. So let's actually create that. Uh, click file here. And instead of Cocoa Touch class, we're going to do a Swift file because all we're going to do is create a class. So uh, I'm going to call this question. And this is going to be a question model. So how do you create a model? Well, a model is just a class and your data are objects. So let's create a class called question. And a class is going to have, let's see, we need the actual question. So that question be of some type of string. And you'll also notice that we have the green and the red background. We're not really representing that right now. So our green would be uh, yes and our red would be no. So we'd probably want a Boolean because when this Boolean is true, we'd be answering yes to the question. If it's false, we're answering no to the question. But then also realize that we have this state where we haven't selected yes or no. So let's make this an optional Boolean. And whenever it's nil, that means it hasn't changed this color yet. So let's call this uh, answer. I'm going to make this a Boolean and put a question mark. That's now an optional Boolean. And we're getting there, that's telling us that we don't have initializer. So let's create an initializer. So this is going to take in some question of type string. And I'm not going to take in an answer because by the default, the empty state would be everything is white. So we haven't selected anything yet. And it's fine to not uh, assign anything to answer because since it's optional, if I haven't assigned anything to it, it's going to be nil. And that's what we want. So Let's set self.question. So we're accessing this question here. And we're going to set that equal to the question argument that we get over here. So this is good for our model. Uh, and let's see over here. Uh, self.answer is not initialized. Let's, let's try to put this to nil and see what happens. Let's stop complaining. OK, that's fine then. Uh, so you do have to initialize it. Uh, so we'll do that. Actually, you you don't have to initialize it. The reason it's telling us to initialize it here is because it's a let variable. If I don't initialize it, it's not going to ever be initialized. If I were to make this a variable, let's remove this. Let's see if it complains still. And it doesn't. And it makes sense to have this as a variable too, because eventually we'll want to change the answer. 
because we're going to be shifting from yes to no. So let's have this as a variable and this is going to be fine because now this is the nil by default. So we're good with that. Um, let's go back into our view controller and now we want to create some dummy data. So let's actually make a new function, say create dummy data. And we'll do it before all of these, create dummy data. And here we're going to put our data inside of a list that contains data. So we need to have that list first. It's going to be a variable because we're going to append to it. And we're going to say, this is our question data. This is going to be of type. It's a list and it has data in it. And our data right now are questions, which we made a model for. So this is a question list. And we want it to be equal to the empty list at first. So we can just append to it. Uh, or we don't need to append to it. Uh, we're not, we don't have much data right now. Uh, empty list is good when you have variable amounts of data. Right now we have four pieces of data. So this is fine, whichever way you do it. Uh, but let's create our data then. Um, so let's create some question one. This is going to be a question and we want to pass into its initializer the question. So I click here, I just click this, it copies it for me. Put some strings and paste. That's your question one. And the question two, we're going to create another question object and then pass in this. Just copy this over here. Question three is some question is this one. Now question four is I wrote it as a positive and positive line two copy and paste. Great. Okay. Now we have all of our dummy data. Uh, we're getting a whole bunch of yellow warnings. This is because we've never actually used it. So if I actually fix this, it'd give me an underscore, which means that it's just uh, something that we never refer to, but we actually want to refer to it. So these warnings are useful to tell us uh, variables that we haven't used, but they're not helping us right now because we want to do question data and we actually want to make a list that has all of these order. All our yellow ones should go away and now we're good. Now that we actually have a list that has four items, now we don't need to hard code this value over here. We can just type in question data, not count, just like in the slides. So we have this now. Let's run it and see if there's any difference. And there's not. There are four uh, rows now, but there's no difference in our data because while I did create some data and while I do have the count here, I never really did anything to myself and myself for ROAD to actually change this text. So to do that, uh, what you should do is you should set the cells, uh, where is it, this one? You want to sell, set the cells question label equal to your questions text for, for each question. So for example, uh, we're going here uh, and I just clicked uh, let's take care of this first. This is very ugly. Uh, this is the selection style of the table view. So if you want to get rid of this, you can uh, type in selection style here. Equals to, I put a dot because this, this is an enum type. I'll set none. Let's fix this real quick. All right, I'm clicking this now. Now it's working fine. Cool. So Let's say I'm adding these cells to my table view now. So for the first one, I'm going to have this at index path zero probably. And I set it to hello world because I'm doing nothing now. But the thing is I want for index path zero for the row, uh, the zeroth row of the index path, I want to get the question in the data and set the text equal to this question label. So if we go back to view controller, uh, what I can do is I'm going to get the question 
for the row I'm at right now, because I set this to question data dot count, I should never get an issue where it goes out of bounds. So uh, let's call this some question. And this is going to be equal to some specific value inside of my question data list. So what specific value is that? Well, I want to access it from index path because that tells me where I am right now, but I want to get the specific row that I'm at. Uh, there's a row and there's also a section. Okay, uh, here's the section. I don't know why it wasn't auto-completing. Uh, so there's a row and a section attribute because the index path is going to tell you which section you're at and which row you're at because we're only concerning ourselves with uh, one section right now. We only need to worry about the row. Uh, if you wanted to do something with sections, you can check to see which section you're at and then you can do something based on that. If you wanted to have different sections with different cell classes, so you'd use an if else for that. Uh, so what this is going to be doing is it's going to be getting us that question that we want for that specific row. And what we can do very simply is cell dot, let's go back here, cell that question label. Question. Okay, we forgot to do one thing. It's not recognizing question label. It's gonna give us the same issue because it thinks it's of the type do I table view cell, which technically it is. This is going to return a UI table view cell, but the thing is I want my custom class, which is question table view cell. And I know that I registered my custom class so what I want to do is instead of this being a UI table view cell, I want to tell it this has to be a question table view cell because I know that I only have that registered and that's the class I want. So to do that, I want to set this cell to be table view dot decubable reusable cell as my question table view cell. And I'm going to put an as with a force unwrap because I know for a fact that I have that there. So let's try to auto complete again, and there it is now. So we can set the question labels text equal to, and yeah, we're going to use the question right now. Question dot question. Okay. Uh, so this is my question object. Let's give it a better name. This is the question object, and from the question object, I'm accessing the question attribute. Which remember, we go back here. That's just the string that represents the question. And over here, this is our question, and we set the string equal to this. So it's going to be accessing you know, 0, 1, 2, 3 over here when the index path accesses that. So let's run this and see if that works. OK, and it looks like it's working now. Uh, one note, though, uh, accessing the cells labels like this, that isn't really great. We want to refer to the UI elements inside of the view, inside of the view itself. So we don't want to really violate uh, MVC. Uh, this isn't very nice to say if we want to change multiple UI elements, uh, we'd have to put a whole bunch of UI elements. And if you're working on a team and you're looking at this and like, where are these elements coming from? And then they have to find the cell that you want. It just becomes a mess. So let's keep all references of the labels and all the other elements inside of the file itself. So how should we do that? Well, I can go back in here and let's just create a nitpick. Let's fix our spacing. Cool. Let's set up a configure function. Uh, it can be called whatever you want. I'm going to call it configure. So in this configure function, I'm going to configure with some question of type question. So this is some special uh, switch stuff. Uh, if I do just question and I go back, uh, let me do this first. Uh, so let's access the question here, um, over here. So instead of this, we're not gonna do this anymore. I'm going to access cell.configure, configure. We do not want to do that for me. Okay, well, in here, we're going to pass in some question of type uh, 
question object. This is what we'll be typing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Autocomplete is my tool all the time. So this is what this would look like. So I'm going to configure a question, and this is a question object. Uh, if I were to type in configure with question, then instead of typing in question here, I can just type in with. So this is more English. So I want to configure this cell with question object. Uh, you can do that if you want. Uh, it's easier to read. Um, so now with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the table view cell, and now I'm going to set the question labels text equal to this questions text uh, over here. So because now my question is question, uh, this is question object and question object here. And the nice thing about with question object is even though I change the internal parameter this function is using, I don't have to make that change here. So that's one benefit of using uh, the special syntax. Uh, so now we have this, let's double check to see if this is still working. Okay, uh, yeah, it seems like it's working. I'm clicking and it's not doing anything with the selection style, so that's good. Now we actually have our data on the screen, so let's go back to formatting it. Uh, okay, so back to here. Uh, let's set this properly. It looks like it's centered, so let's set the text alignment of the question label to be center. Um, and we were using a UI label. Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, let's set the font size first. It looks like it's 10. So my question label, question label dot font is equal to UI font dot system font of size 10. Uh, let's run this. Okay. And now it's going off to the side because UI label only uses one line, but that's if you tell it to uh, use one line. Uh, I can just do question label dot number of lines, uh, and I can set it to two. If I set it to zero, it'd have infinite lines. If I set it to two, it's going to give me two lines. So really, you can use a label and a text view interchangeably. Uh, text view by default will let you um, edit it. So just really use uh, whichever one makes more sense for your use case. Uh, and it looks like we have everything working but I'm clicking on these and it's not changing color. And that's because we never set that up. So let's set that up right now. I am trying to interact with one of these cells. And if I'm trying to uh, interact with them, I need to refer to whatever manages the interactions. And that was our uh, UI table view delegate. So if we go back here in our view controller, they didn't set anything up here. So let's do that now. Um, so we want to do something when we press some row. So uh, select, and that's what it looks like, this select row, I, like I forgot it, but I want to select something I tip in select and I'll just choose whichever one makes more sense. So if I did select row at index path, then I want to do something special. So uh, we're going to access that uh, cell. It's going to be equal to table view dot uh, we don't want to do the queuable cell because we're not creating it. Uh, we're going to do uh, cell for row at just, well, it's the same function name, so maybe something to remember this. Uh, we want to select uh, the cell at index path. Uh, and it's going to give you an issue because this, again, is thinking that it's a UI table view cell. So let's do an as again. This is a downcast. We downcasted it to table view cell. So now it is a question table view cell. Um, so now we want to do something special with it. Uh, so if I press it, I want to make it green. If it's white, if it's green already, I want to make it red. And if it's red, I want to make it green. So first, let's focus on setting the state of our data. So right now our question object, our question model has an answer. Um, so let's mess with that. Let's do, uh, oh, let me get rid of this comment here. So we wanna get a reference to the question object again. 
And here, what we want to do is we want to access its answer property. So if I were to check its answer property, uh, so first I want to unwrap it because it's an optional. So if let unwrapped answer equal to question object dot answer. So there's two cases. Uh, if it's nil, and assuming that it's it's no longer a nil value, it's either true or false. So we want to take care of that case in the yes. So let's say it's nil. That must mean it's white first, and then we want it to go from white to green. Uh, that means we want to set uh, our question object equal to uh, true. Uh, not the question object. We want to set its answer property to true. And we also want to do something with our uh, table view cell. Uh, so we'll get to that. But first, let's just set the state of our question object. So, uh, and it looks like uh, it's saying that we never used it. Uh, this is similar to how in project one where you had to unwrap, but you didn't want to actually mess with what you unwrapped. So I can just do this and that should be fun. Or if I really want to have uh, better syntax, I can just check to see if uh, a better structure, uh, question object dot answer, I wanna make sure if that's equal to nil, I want to do something with that. Otherwise it's equal to true or false. So what I want to do in that case is my question objects answer if it's equal to true, I want it to be false. If it's equal to false, I want it to be equal to true. I can just make it equal to the negated, the current negated. Uh, I can negate whatever it is currently. Uh, and now we actually want to unwrap. So let's actually fix this. Uh, let me undo some stuff. So we actually do have to use the value at some point. Um, so if let unwrap answer, okay. So this will only run if there was a value inside of it. So this should actually go here. But now if it is unwrapped, that means there was a true or false value in there. I want to set my question objects answer equal to uh, the negated value of unwrapped answer. So that should work fine. Uh, now let's go into the next step. Now we set our internal data state, and now we want to pass that data to our uh, table view cell, and we want to change the background color uh, based on it. So let's create a function here. We have a configure, let's do another one. Uh, we'll do function, let's set uh, background, set, set background color, okay. Um, and we'll set it with the question object again, just like with the configure. So this is something special. This is a special state. I press on something and so it's gonna call this. Uh, if I'm doing setup, I'd use the configure instead, but because I'm not setting it up again, I just want to use this. Uh, so with set background color, I want to get the current response. So, or the current answer, if my question object's answer is true, I want it to be red. Otherwise, no, if it's true, I want it to be green. If it's false, I want it to be red. That's how we have a setup. Uh, and again, it's asking for a, um, it wants to unwrap it because right now it's an optional inside of there. So let's actually improve this. Uh, I just want it to have with answer here. And I'm going to set this to bool. And the reason I want to do this is because if I go back into, uh, let me fix this here. If I go back into view controller, after this is run, it's either going to go into this one or this one. So I know by the end of this if let at the very beginning, it's going to not be optional. Well, it's still be optional, but it's going to actually have a value in there. It's never going to be nil. So this is one of those rare cases where it's fine to use a force on that. So I want to set the background color and I want the answer, or it's not answer, it's worth because we're using that special syntax. And I want this to be the question objects answer. 
and I want to force unwrap that. So this is one of those cases where you can do force unwrapping because you're guaranteed that it will not crash when you have logic like this. So with that, uh, let's go back. Uh, so final step is now we want to set the background color. So to set the background color, it would be view the background color, but because we're in a table view cell, we do content view the background color. And we're going to do the same thing here. So to get a custom color, we do UI color dot commit, and we're going to take the RGB alpha. And I'm going to click here. I want to click on the rectangle. I'll just double click. That looks like a double click when you click on the label. Okay, and I click on the rectangle now. So it's 244 divided by 255. Green is 250 divided by 255. Blue is 240 divided by 255. And then the alpha is one. And do something here. This is red now. So 253 divided by 255. Set the green to be 193 divided by 255. Set the blue to 193 divided by 255. And then my alpha is 1. OK, this is going away. It should fit. Let's run this now. Okay, uh, so if I click here, it's green. If I were to click again, it's red. And if I click again, it's green. So there we go. Uh, looks like this is a little bit off. It's cutting off at COVID-19. Um, so that just looks like uh, it's not going to fit on the page. Uh, I guess one fix that we can do is make the row height uh, higher and just increase the number of lines in the question label. But this is fine. Uh, you can just make the question shorter too. This is dumb data, uh, but it is something you'd have to think about when you're actually doing that. So this is good. Uh, this is the end of the demo. Uh, so let's go back to the slides. OK. Uh, so some action items, uh, project two and project one grades should be released. So if you have any concerns about uh, your grade, just reach out to your TA mentor. Uh, remember that this Wednesday is the late deadline for project three and project four is going to be released. Uh, you can go on the Figma page after it is set up and you will be able to start and it'll be due next week on Sunday. So uh, thank you for watching uh, and good luck on your project.